There are various outer gods that have some level of influence in the lands between. While the Greater Will holds power across the land, due to the long-standing rule of the Golden Lineage, the power of the Elden Ring, and the prominence of the Ur-Tree, there are traces of gods that had a foothold in this place before it was so thoroughly conquered. The Formless Mother, or the Mother of Truth, is the source of blood incantations, and it is assumed that after she appeared to Moog, he built his dynasty in lands already drenched with blood, as his great rune mentions it is soaked in accursed blood from his devout love for the wretched mire that he was born into. There's an unnamed god of the twin bird that fled the land long ago, leaving nothing behind but ghost flame rituals and a few deathrite birds. There is even the frenzied flame, which is either an outer god itself or a representation of its influence, which had its own three fingers locked away by the golden lineage. Today we want to discuss the children of one of these outer gods. A god who once roamed the land spreading pestilence where her progeny could thrive. That is until she was sealed away by a swordsman of superior skill. These tragic creatures, the kindred of Rot, wish to revive their goddess, even if her latest incarnation has forsaken their kind outright. Welcome back to Elden Lore our long-running series diving into the lore and history of the people, places, and monsters of the Lands Between. Whether you're a long-time viewer or have just found us on your suggested list, thank you for choosing to spend some time with us today. With over two years of lore videos under our belt, we hope you'll be able to find the answers to all of your questions about Elden Ring. But if not, feel free to suggest new topics in the comments, and we'll see what we can dig up. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We really enjoy interacting with the community we've built since entering this space, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. You can also join our Discord, where our community discusses all things Elden Ring and FromSoft. Whether you subscribe or not, we're just happy you're here. And with that said, let's get back to the topic at hand. The Kindred of Rot are disgusting. These enemies have been described by some as having prawn-like bodies, but I believe they more closely resemble bugs such as centipedes. Their movements in battle also reflect this as they can skitter away on their many hands. If you take a closer look, you can see their insectoid heads with pincers and feelers. However, their limbs resemble that of small, emaciated humans. Their chest and abdomen have many tiny arms protruding from them, while they walk and hold their weapons with their longer appendages. They even curl up into a ball upon being killed the way many bugs do. Whatever these things are, they seem to have adopted some level of human anatomy, but that's their only true physical resemblance to people. It's their zealotry that can perhaps make a better case for these monsters having some level of humanity. Many item descriptions can give us details on these creatures that point toward their abandonment by the goddess of rot. The kindred rot ashes tell us, this spirit takes the form of a crawling pest, its chitinous body making a dry rustling sound, attacks enemies by secreting sticky threads. The kindred of Rot are the servants of the goddess of Rot, servants that have been forsaken. The incantation pest threads is described as an incantation of the servants of Rot, secretes countless sticky threads launching them forwards. A technique of the pale pests who crawl through the lands afflicted by Scarlet Rot, the abandoned children of the goddess. Lastly, the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation Talisman depicts the exaltation of pests, and raises attack power when poisoning or rot occurs in the vicinity. Rot for the Scarlet Goddess. O oh, Scarlet Blossoms, flourish in distant lands, and return to us, the unwanted children. The last part of this item description seems as though it's a prayer being said by these creatures as they praise their god. It would be easy to assume that the god they're praising, the one who abandoned them, is Melania. This could make sense. She created an explosion of rot within Kaelid that likely led to the births of many pests, and we know that Melania herself never reveled in her powers. Melania preferred to keep the rot in check, both through the discipline of her sword training and the boons granted to her by her brother, Mikola. So she would likely not embrace these insect-like creatures, born from the power she likely despised. However, 
I don't believe Melania is the goddess these creatures are referring to, simply her reincarnation. As we know, another goddess of rot once roamed the lands between, and she was sealed away by a blind swordsman with a flowing blade. This is the god that abandoned her kindred, who they still praise to this day, and who they hope will be fully reincarnated when Melania reaches her third bloom. The proof of these creatures' continued worship of a god long since sealed away is not just found in their item descriptions, but in the world itself, just beyond the Lake of Rot. We can assume that the kindred of Rot above come from Melania, as they reside amongst the Rot and Caled, as well as within the Halid Tree, where she could not help but produce more rivers of Rot. But the Grand Cloister, beyond the lake and far below the surface, is likely an area Melania herself had never visited. It's in this church where the kindred of Rot still offer their worship to the original goddess of Rot. This can be seen through their reverence to this hallowed place, dripping with Rot, and where specifically they choose to hold counsel. If we fight our way through these pests, we can make our way down to the hall they're standing outside of, and once inside, we can open a chest to find the scorpion stinger. This weapon is a dagger fashioned from a great scorpion's tail, glistening with scarlet rot, a ceremonial tool used by heretics, crafted from the relic of a sealed outer god. Notice this rot-based weapon makes no mention of Melania. It refers to her predecessor, the sealed outer god of rot that once existed long ago. This is where these kindred of rot choose to worship, just steps away from a sacred relic of their original god. The last topic we want to cover when it comes to the Kindred of Rot is that of Gowry, the heretical sage who made his home just outside of Celia, town of sorcery. This old man sits in his hut guarded by a giant rotting dog, and is the catalyst for one of the longest quests in Elden Ring, that of helping Millicent overcome her rotting body and tracing the march of Melania from Caled back to the Halig Tree. All during this quest, Gowry refers to Millicent as his daughter and shows concern for her well-being. While he wants you to cure, or rather stabilize, her rot, he himself sells us rot incantations, the first solid clue that something about this man is not above board. As we progress Millicent's quest, Gowry shares more information with us. He found Millicent and her sisters within the Aeonia Swamp, and set them on course to their fates, though he doesn't share what that is. After we give Millicent the Valkyrie prosthesis, he shares some truth about himself. I have an interest in rot incantations. Then you might like to learn something of the history of Melania, goddess of scarlet rot. Queen Marika and her king consort Radigan were blessed with twin demigods and Melania was one of them. She was born an Empyrean carrying the Scarlet Rod. An Empyrean is no mere demigod. In the age of the Elden Ring and Queen Manica, the precious Empyrean was born, a new god to forge a new order. Since Melania fought Radan, and the great Scarlet Flower blossomed in Aeonia, I have dedicated myself to her, and to the resplendence of the Order of Rot, the cycle of decay and rebirth. It seems Gowry's true intentions are not as pure as watching over his adoptive daughters. It's at this point many players, myself included, may have tried to attack Gowry, but if you do, something very interesting happens. A kindred of rot appears in his place, and you can hear his voice saying, We shall meet again, you and I. There are countless pests to choose from. When we make our way back to his shack, he's alive and well. He'll even say to us, Have you taken the lesson now? Killing me is but an exercise in futility. All is well, provided you understand. Let's just pretend it never happened, shall we? 
We can attack him again with the same result, only this time he tells us we may kill him as many times as it takes for us to understand. I believe there are two possible explanations for what may be happening here. Either Gowrie's true body is somewhere else, and he merely projects himself onto these kindred of Rod, or Gowrie is a collective consciousness of the kindred, shared across their kind. So no matter how many times we kill Gowrie, he can always return. Either way, at the end of Millicent's quest, he speaks with us one final time. <sighs> Millicent, my daughter, why would you take out the needle? You were so close, so very close, to becoming the fairest of all flowers. Would you disown us too, as your mother did? We children of the scarlet rot. Millicent, Melania. Do you detest us so utterly? The answer to Gowrie's question is clear. The original goddess of rot is not coming back, and Millicent, like her mother before her, had no intention of letting the rot overtake her. The kindred of rot have no hope of their god's return, and will be forever shunned by the new avatar of rot. That is unless someone discovers a way to unseal their original god. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode in our ongoing Elden Ring lore series. What do you think of the Kindred of Rot? What kind of bugs do you believe they're based on? Why does a centipede-like creature fire threads as weaponry? Will we ever encounter the true Goddess of Rot? Or is that who Melania became in our battle with her? Are the Kindred of Rot connected by a shared consciousness? Or was Gowrie a sorcerer of such power and eloquence that he was able to bring the kindred living in Kaled under his control. Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and set notifications to all so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We'll see you in the new year for more. Elden Lore